Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1 and this episode we begin by once again trying to get our second and third trusses onto the mission. After that we are going to be going with the Xenon tanks and then the propulsion unit and then basically the core thing is done. So uh, let's get on with it. We'll see how far we get. I don't plan to do any uh, moon missions or anything like that until we fully assemble the Mars mission. So SAS on. I'll fly it manually and then we'll see. Uh, I'll wait on the booster and see when the dynamic pressure goes down and maybe we can decouple it safely this time. So ignition. And launch. Uh, sort of going off to the side here. Let's, let's not do that. So we can see dynamic pressure from the FAR data. You can see uh, 35 kilopascals there and climbing. We can just set an arbitrary limit. Probably whenever these wavy lines uh, are around, that's not a good thing. Let's say 20 kilopascals. I guess knocked about, but it seems like it's intact, actually. It didn't look like it ripped apart. Let's check F3. Seems okay, maybe? The station is behind us, or station slash Mars mission is behind us, so we need to just get into a high orbit to begin with. Okay, throttle up, separation. Nozzle. Check. Okay. Bearings. And there we have our two trusses. So what I did was I just added another uh, one of these androgynous propellant only docking ports. And incidentally, uh, I haven't been using them, but they, they do have these secure clamps. <laughs> uh, among things that... Oh, I need to unclamp now. I checked, uh, we, we can see that it has an undock there, so no problems this time. Should have carried more electric charge though, I forgot about that. But with things shaping up the way they are, I hopefully the rendezvous isn't going to take too long. In fact, I'm going to have it go up and then burn at apoapsis. We've got multiple ignitions after all. Uh, we probably have to stick one of the solar panels out again once we get into the daylight side. Next time I'll, I mean, well, if we build a new one, I'll put some battery packs on here. Or I can get a Kerbal to EVA and stick some on maybe. But, I mean, it's not critical once it's on the assembly. Right now the only power is in here, and that power is just for launching and deorbiting it. Okay, trying to do adjustments at 3x time warp because the RCS is too slow. Well, more or less this is how real approaches go down, just little RCS thrusters doing a lot of work. So, yeah. Very realistic. I gotta say, so uh, recently there was news about ExoMars 2020 having parachute issues. 
And I'm, I'm contemplating whether I should just add a propulsive landing, a, a pure propulsive landing system instead of having parachutes at all. I don't know. That's a fair amount of delta V. It's a good question which way is better, but if the parachutes really don't work, the parachutes really don't work, right? I mean, you don't have a whole lot of hope. And um, if they can't do it for something small, then for a large crewed mission, it's even worse. Well, it's proving more difficult than I feel it ought to be to get this slowed down. So, I'm, I'm just going to have it point at the target and hope the tug can deal with the rest. Okay, we've got connection now. What went wrong last time was we couldn't undock. Uh, is that an undock? Uh, there's no force, I don't think. Uh, whoops. No? Really? What is wrong with these things? Nope, it doesn't want to undock. It had an undock option. There's an undock option, but it didn't work. So I've got a bit of a flaw in these ports. Let me try and resolve that. Okay, well, I'm completely perplexed. I mean, we've already demonstrated that these, when docking to each other, can decouple. In fact, I could decouple the tug here right now. Uh, if I go undock, it works. I've checked. But these, for some reason, do not work. The ones that were attached in the, in the VAB. There's only one node for them to attach to. So it's not like the, the, they're attached to the wrong node or anything. Um, the collider should not be interfering. Uh, I've checked the configurations. They're configured like any other docking port. There's no peculiarity about them as far as that's concerned. At least I, that I can tell. So it's very frustrating. Uh, somebody apparently in the comments laughed at the last time I had trouble undocking these but I mean it's frustrating because I created the part and I thought that they worked and uh, yeah I'm, I'm not not, ha not really happy with this but best solution is to bring the whole business into dock so that a Kerbal can get to it and I'll take the advice that uh, we can send a Kerbal up with uh, KIS stuff and see if they can make something of it. I mean, there's no, I mean, a decoupler, I suppose, would be better, but I'm just not happy with these ports not working like they're supposed to. And I'm, I'm not wanting to launch again. I guess sending a Kerbal up will be something different. I'm bringing along the stage as a counter, you know, RCS thrusters on the opposite side for the time being make it easier to dock with this otherwise it's very unbalanced the way it's attached right now okay now matter of clearance I think we can dock this one to that side and there'll still be clearance for the tug to come off we'll see camera's really annoying right now Okay, we are connected, and I mean, we'll probably have to retract these solar panels if we want to actually get that tug off. It'd be a close call otherwise. Um, yeah, well, that's that's all good. I don't suppose this will undock now. No, there, there isn't even an option. But we might as well get the stage off. It's uh, done. It's possible that we could just blow this stack by cup by adapter up at some point. Uh, I don't know what the Kerbal is going to do when, when up here. We'll have to see. But yeah, I'll, I'll get this off. I know. Or maybe there's no point right now. 
We'll wait until the Kerbal's up. Okay, so I guess we'll launch a Kerbal here a little bit earlier than expected. Okay, so we're going to launch a full complement of Kerbals, four Kerbals, all four of the regulars, uh, Jeb, Bill, Bob, and Val, uh, to our Mars mission to fix what's up. Uh, they've all been equipped with drills and screwdrivers, uh, sorry, wrenches, uh, yeah. So hopefully they'll be able to do something with our situation and test out our life support and how comfortable everything is. I still haven't added a treadmill to the thing, so that's a consideration. But let me load in the... So far I've been launching the One Stick Sagita by hand. It looks like I have a script here, but um, it seems like the initial thrust weight ratio is pretty low from what it said in the in the VAB. Let me just load in this one I have. Yeah, uh, though it's being deceptive like about the delta V, uh, all I have to do is put another stage here. That's really what the delta V is of the rocket. The service module here is only half filled and locked. So that's true. There's some fancy business there. All right, let's let's go ahead. Oh, I haven't gotten that gimbal response speed thing. I'll just add SAS for now. That'll stop it. As you can see, very gradual ascent. We could underfuel the service module more, or otherwise underfuel this, which I did not do, but could do. Either way, we have too much fuel for the mission. I suppose we could transfer some of it to the mission at the Mars. Tugs, I suppose. Probably the tugs. The script will thrall down at 4 Gs. Right there. And it's better to disengage SAS for staging. Liquid oxygen reserves are low. Only because we have such a huge tank. <laughs> uh, the way it le reads the liquid oxygen is a little bit funny, but alright. Okay, let's check the ISP. ISP is good. Uh, things seem to be as properly configured. Well, we should not unlock that. I don't know. Well, cross speed should be disabled there, so I guess it'll be all right. That was just to make sure the clamps didn't refill, refill it, so. Should get jettison. There we go. Off goes the launch escape system. We've got the right docking port. Okay. As you can see, way more delta V than we need overall. And that's it. 215 by 177. And let's just stabilize with RCS. And what does this say? Well, some of our loon sats are in a bit of a pinch, but overall, uh, I'm carrying extra uh, lithium hydroxide to deliver to the station. We just fit it into the pod. Mm, otherwise, everything's uh, 14 days or more. Okay. Uh, well, let's have the upper stage deorbit itself. I think that's for the best. All right, that's done. And this has plenty of Delta V for a rendezvous. I don't know right now which side of the docking module the NASA docking port is, can't quite see that. So we'll just have to head on over to that side and check it out. Okay, that's a propellant only one. So right there is where we want to be. 
Well, there is a minor flaw in that they can't really EVA out from here. Remember, there's a shell around it, which sort of complicates EVAs. And there's no airlock here or here. Um, hopefully there's an airlock on that B330 module, otherwise they really can't get out. <laughs> Uh, we'll see. Without the shell, there's a way for them to get out, and maybe they'll just pop out of the shell. I mean, you can see when I float over here, it says crew hatch. But I'm sort of worried they'll just explode when I do that. And, of course, there's the whole matter of getting back in, which is another complication. I don't know, this BA-330 doesn't seem to have anything obvious. So, well, let me try. Um, Bill's the engineer. So, let's transfer Bill. Staging's all messed up. Okay, EVA. Module has no hatch. Right. In fact, I should have probably hired more engineers. Bill is our only engineer. Okay. Well, there is only one hatch that I know of. Get ready for potential Kerbal explosion. Ah, hatch obstructed. Okay, well, guess what? Before we fix anything, we are going to have to install an airlock. So, we have another launch to do. Uh, before that though, let's take a look at what the situation is. Living space ideal comfort poor, it says. It doesn't say how long they'll be happy for. Yep, it does not say. Otherwise, we have a fair amount of other things. They can hang out for a while. But yeah, next launch, airlock. We'll put it on the opposite side over here has to be on one of the NASA docking systems, otherwise they won't be able to pass through. Okay, so I decided to add CX Aerospace, and that's why we have this Quest Joint Airlock system. I decided to just take that as is. It's been configured for Realism Overhaul already. Uh, pretty heavy. Um, well, at least the wet one is. Well, still dry is pretty heavy. I put the capsule up there because I was configuring a life support tank, uh, adding some more food, water, and oxygen in. But I noticed when I added the oxygen, this says duration 1 year and 420 days. So, <laughs> that's that's not right. Uh, now let me do a quick uh, calculation based on this consumed number. Um, is that consumed for the 4 Kerbals I have in here? Or just, uh, yeah it is. Okay, so that's for all 4. And if I take that and multiply it out for a day and then divide by the storage that we have there. Okay, and then 2002800 divide by that. We got 585 days. Um, that would seem to be, uh, well, that's more than more than two years, uh, yeah, more than two years if we're going with 24-hour uh, days. So, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it, it seems to have 420-day years for some reason. So this, this, doesn't, this is probably not right either. Per minute, it says. That's uh, 23 units per day. That's 868 days worth. Uh, let's see how many it thinks a year is. It thinks a year is 433 days. So, well, that's buffer. And I'm, I'm talking about 24 hour days. So, yeah, nobody uh, readjusted how long a year was compared to the Kerbin year. They've got 24 hour days, but not the right length of year. So we'll take that into account. It seems all right. I mean, it means that we'll end up with more buffer, I suppose. I don't know how the external view is. Probably has the same problem. Anyway, so just be aware of that. I'll see what we can load up on uh, Sajita, I think. I'm not going to try and launch. Well, we'll see.
Okay, I was about to launch our airlock, but then it gave me a message that said that our mission is running out of power, which should be impossible because <laughs> it's got really huge solar panels that uh, are meant to power ion engines. And even though we don't have all of them out, it, it, I, I oriented it fine. I left it oriented properly. And it says that it's running out of power. It's got like 500,000. No, it is on the nighttime side, but that's fine. It shouldn't be anywhere close to running out of power. Um, see, it's got a draw on the nighttime side of 17 kilowatts, right? And I'm going to go over to the daylight side and probably mess up my attempt to rendezvous with it with that craft but see now it is recharging at a rate of 341 which also still doesn't make any sense because I thought that these were 89 kilowatts apiece so that's not right that's uh, is basically getting double what it ought to from these like something else is messing around but like Kerbalism is doing it as well or something and but but there's no reason why on the nighttime side it should deplete enough to cause any warnings I'll do the math we said uh, 17 let's say 18 kilowatt draw on the nighttime side okay that gives us 64,800 units that it'll lose on the nighttime side we have 560,000 units so it it shouldn't deplete and it should recover all of it on the daylight side so I'm miffed <laughs> I, I, I don't need this I don't need this in my life and I know the Kerbals will die if they run out of power so yeah that's not nice now I don't know if we have enough Delta V with this quest airlock launch I'll try and control it manually but it's pretty heavy. We're, I'm trying to use the single stick Sagita with four boosters, so that may or may not work. I mean, Delta V-wise, it, it's not telling me anything nice. Let me put it that way. So, yeah. We're carrying all sorts of stuff inside. We're carrying extra supplies. But throttle up, now say us on, retract the thingamajig. And there's a lot of thrust weight ratio at least. And well, 0.98 degrees we can fix. Well, it's actually going past. Ignition. And launch. Okay. Better get going horizontal quickly. Well, let's see about what Faras is saying. We'll wait for maybe 15. I'll see what I have patience for. Okay, off they go. Doesn't seem like anything broke off. They're spun all over the place, but nothing broke off. I wonder why the far window... Did I, did I click it closed, or did it disappear? Okay, separation. And extension. And check is good. Alright, fairings. So that's it. I mean, just the quest air lock plus extra supplies. Nothing too fancy. This is empty. And then docking ports at both ends, otherwise, of course, the tug isn't going to be able to grab it, so... Hopefully the tug has enough width to grab it without interfering with this little bit here, the, the actual hatch. We don't have a huge amount of Delta V extra for the rendezvous. Well, I'm gonna try and 
Burn it apoapsis again, take advantage of the multiple ignition thing. Okay, well let's focus on the Mars transfer vehicle, which has its batteries getting low again. A boil off from the liquid oxygen seems to be replenishing our oxygen here. And that's mainly because of this stage, which doesn't have... Like, well, it ought to have some. Something on... Well, okay, the tugs probably don't have any uh, of the insulation. Okay, we have to keep a little bit of fuel just to make sure this can stay stable. But then again, this thing, once it ignites, is gonna go pretty fast. Alright, we'll keep that eight. Alright, we need a tug to come out and grab this. When the tug isn't tugging anything, it uh, has the luxury of going fast. Okay, target that. Negative parallel. Actually, we need to control from here. Spinning all over the place. Probably should be using fine controls, but I think we've got it. We've got it. All right. All right. Decouple. Tug hat. Tug and Hab Probe. Well, this ran out in a hurry. Okay, well, we'll have to... This isn't a Tug and Hab. This is the Quest Airlock. So, what's the Tug and Hab Probe again? That's the Mars Transfer Vehicle. I renamed it. Well, I guess this now... Oh, because this is this Tug was called Tug and Hab. Okay, that's fine. Alright, let's target that. 100 kilometers away. Only 327 meters per second to work with now that we're carrying this thing. Uh, stop wiggling. I should have taken the extra fuel out. I thought that it would be able to deorbit, but. Oh, we lost communication just now. Gosh darn it. 300 meters is hopefully safe. Hopefully, it's I try to limit how many satellites I put around because it all increases lag as far. I mean, it's sort of a latent remote tech thing, but I may have to bring the other tug out. Mainly, I blame the communication losses for this. Oh god, and smart ESS sometimes. Gonna send the other tug out to refuel this one. Okay, well, let's get what we can get into the tug. It's pretty close to being full, but we can get some more from this and maybe even the service module. Because all it'll need to do is, oops, wrong thing, um, eventually deorbit. But, oh, it, it thinks the tug is the Mars transfer vehicle. That's complicated. Okay, control from here. we go. I really need to get to it before it we lose communication again. Well I guess we might as well ride along. Otherwise it'll be annoying to get this one back over. Okay we've talked. Let's share some fuel. Obviously it's a bit imbalanced without... Uh, maybe if we activate it, um, the gimbling and RCS will be good enough to hold it a little bit better than it is right now. I don't see it doing any RCS stuff though.
Now, technically, I should be docking it on the truss, but we'll deal with that later. So that we can control that truss if we separate it off, since otherwise it doesn't have anything else controlling it. Okay, that's fine. Next. That's not really where I want to dock, but it'll be fine. Well, I could tell this to control from the dock that I want, and then we'll have things a little bit simpler. I guess the good news is, so far, no appreciable lag in the vicinity of this thing. Oh boy, come on, cancel out that sideward's drift. You can do it. Oh, come on. That should be a good boop now. Okay. All right. Six F soul boop. And. Well, now they have an airlock, but we better clear this tug because they're going to go out from there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Whew. I thought I had another undock problem. Oh, 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 don't do that. Oh. Now, I put two water recyclers on the side of the Quest airlock, so we'll have to see whether those work. Those are Kerbalism water recyclers. Might feel a little bit safer with my own, but for the time being, they might be a good thing to try. Okay, so that's fine. How is our life support overall? Well, it says two years or so of food, seven years of oxygen, and growing because liquid oxygen is depleting. Um, nitrogen, five years. Lithium hydroxide, only one year and 45 days, so we'll watch for that. Um, water, 307 days. Now, I don't know if it's got... Well, it says water recycler running here. So those are already running. Hmm. Well, we'll see. That's a lot of boil off, if that's boil off. Looks so much over here, but... Okay, so... Bill, we will need to move. Bill's inventory includes a drill and all. Bill, oh, what's the interior? Well, this is a pretty nice interior. Okay, EVA. There isn't any hydrazine in the suit. Why isn't it a nitrogen? So we have to send hydrazine up. Hmm. <laughs> oh God. Okay, well, obviously, just sending up hydrazine is not good. Even if we use like a special rocket system where I only use like one ED4, like if I made my own version of Falcon 1 or something, it'd still not be worthwhile. Um, so what I think is going to happen is we're going to send up a xenon gas module and we'll temporarily dock it over here on this propellant only docking port. We'll have hydrazine with it and um, when it comes time of course we have to put the trusses together and then we will uh, put the xenon tank over here but yeah i'll send that up but i'll prepare that for another episode this has been really long <laughs> at least for me it's been really long i don't know how much i can edit out or not but yeah well we've got kerbals on here we've got an airlock on here and the next time we'll send up some fuel, hydrazine, and xenon gas. I don't know um, 
well, the hydrazine will deplete. So I don't know how much we should send for all the EVAs. That's a sort of question mark I didn't plan for. But anyway, uh, they're uh, collecting radiation. I don't know. They're probably not going to get too radiated. This oxygen, we're, we're getting way too much oxygen. Why do I even have space for that oxygen? It doesn't make any I mean, there's no place for the oxygen to be. This isn't increasing. It's actually decreasing. So I don't know why that oxygen number is going up, right? Because we're not getting any more oxygen. We're actually depleting oxygen. Okay, well, it's all puzzling, but I'll leave it here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.